What's good with it in the hood with it? Welcome back to the collective clips where you already know we get it in, right? But before we get it in, let's hit that like and subscribe button. Put your notification bell on all so that way you're directed in the direction of the dope content I am kicking. And I highly appreciate all the support, man. Thank you. We're going up and it's all because of you. So, you know, I was asked yesterday a question about the women's facility, the women's prisons, and some of the worst women that are in there. You know, and the funny thing is, I already had something on deck, man, something I wanted to speak on and talk about. And that's <clears throat> some of the worst, despicable, grimiest tortas ever locked up in the California prison system, man. I mean, you know, for the most part, most of those chicks that are locked up in Valley State Prison for Women, Chachilla, you know, they're uh, they're just doing their thing, man. They're all over there trying to get their licky lick on, right? But at the same time, in the meantime, in between time, there's a lot of women that are in there for child abandonment, doing bad things to their children. And these three women I wanted to talk about, man, are some of the worst, most despicable human beings on earth, right? And um, I don't want to shed light to them, but I wanted to talk about, you know, kind of some of the things that they'll go through and the similarities that they'll have to go through that many men have to go through that have bad charges while incarcerated in the California prison system. So the first chick I wanted to talk about is someone who's very well known, um, Pearl Fernandez. She's the mother of Gabriel Fernandez. And a few years back, man, she got caught up on probably one of the worst cases in California history. And that's where her and her boyfriend um, took it upon themselves to torture and, and, and do bad things to Gabriel, right? And they made a Netflix special out of it. And you know, Pearl Fernandez has went through some hardships. She's went through some bullshit, everything well-deserved. You know, my tia was locked up in prison with her and she told me many stories about her. And, you know, if you think that she's being slept on and no one's getting at her, um, that's far from the truth. They're getting at her headpiece, right? There was plenty of incidences where she was caught up, she was caught slipping and fucked up. Now, there are a lot of women that are incarcerated. And one thing about the women prisons and the women facilities in California is they don't play the gang issues um, they might segregate themselves by counties or by areas. You know, you're going to have a lot of the girls from L.A., San Diego, the IE, Southern California sticking together just because they have more in common. They know they're from the same area. Um, they're homegirls, right? Whereas in Northern California, it's pretty much the same thing. You're going to have a lot of chicks from Sacramento, Fresno, Modesto, Merced, uh, San Fran stick together just because it's not a North or South thing. It's just they're kicking it with homegirls from their area. Now, any chick that's locked up on a bad case, you know, whether it be rape or child abandonment or child molestation, anything like that, um, they're going to catch the blues, just like a man would in prison. The only difference with men is it's for keeps. Men are putting some steel in you, right? If you have a bad charge, like, say, Danny Masterson or or Isato, uh, uh, the guy fucking Isato fucking Aguirre, you know, that just got caught up in Corcoran, um, these type of individuals, when they hit a yard, you know, if it's a high-profile case, everybody's looking at him as a trophy. Everybody's going to try to get at him. That's what happened with Danny Masterson, man. The first chance they got, they ran up on him. You know, certain individuals are going to get taxed on. Um, but it seems like the guys that get hit the hardest are gang members. You know, cleanups, pegadas, things within their own car. Someone fucks up a gambling debt, a drug debt. Those are probably um, what, some of the most serious infractions you can do in prison. That's when you're going to see people get removed and blasted on the yard. They're going to get butchered on that yard. Now, as far as uh, Pearl Fernandez goes, you know, she went in there with a very bad case and it was publicized a lot. Everybody knew exactly what she was in there for. And there's a lot of women that are going through the hardship of not being around their children, not being able to see their children. A lot of them, you know, were got into drugs, dope, fell for a man and they lost their children. Um, so when they see a woman do something like this to her kid or allow a guy to do that to her kid, um, they're feeling some type of way. And best believe she's going to get jumped on, beat on, scratched on, all that. And it's happened plenty of times. You know, do I wish bad upon anybody? No, absolutely not. But at the same time, I understand exactly what it is to go into prison and, and have to wonder every day, when could be your last day? Is today your last day? You're always thinking about it. Whether you're solid, you're good in the hood, and you got no infractions, you haven't fucked up, your case is all good, you still have to worry about if the next man is targeting you, especially if you're a gang member, man, you got opposition, you got people on the other side of the yard that pose a serious threat and want to put something in you at the first chance they get. That's just how it is. 
That's why I always tell everybody, if you're in prison, the best thing to do is maintain, stay out the mix, stay away from the drugs, stay away from the gambling, man, kind of fly under the radar, kick it. When your hand needs to be raised to handle your business, you raise it as high as you can and you do your thing and you wiggle. That's the only way to make it. Um, if you try to be one of those guys that walk in there all badass, um, you're going to get deflated. They're going to pop your fucking tire quick. It's just the way it is. Now, when it comes to these women... I've always said the women facilities run a little bit different. The only way I know is because I've had tias and, of course, primas that have been locked up, incarcerated, um, in prison, did numerous years around some heavy hitters. You know, a lot of people sleep on the women's facilities and think these chicks ain't really about the business. But there are some chicks out there, man, that are incarcerated that are with the business even more so than the men. They're not playing, you know. They've been around some heavy hitters. They've been around some real ones. So they're laced up a certain way. They know what time it is. You know, for people that sleep on women and think women ain't with the sh activities, the shenanigans in the business, um, you're quietly misled, Holmes, because they're just about as vicious as any man would be. You know, there's been plenty of stabbings, plenty of beatings and things that have happened in the women facilities as well. We just don't hear about them as much as you hear about the men's problems, um, but the women's have their issues. Now, from what I was told by my tia, when she was around Pearl Fernandez, um, that chick was catching the blues every day because of her case. And because a lot of these women were taking out their strife, their grief, you know, them not being able to see their kids and be around their children and raise their children on a woman who threw hers away, who basically, you know, did what she did to her son, Gabriel Fernandez. But she's not the only one. See, there's a couple other fat fucking tortas lurking in the bushes. And one of them's name is Heather Baron, right? Heather Baron, uh, of course, her case is something similar, exactly almost to the T, um, as Gabriel Fernandez's case, Pearl Fernandez's case. And her and, of course, her old man did the, pretty much the same thing to their son. Again, another woman manipulated by a man. And I'm going to break it on down why these women do the things they do. Because it's very easy to uh, not assume, but to tell you guys the straight up facts on why. I've seen plenty of tortas, plenty of women. Um, and they're not just, it just doesn't mean they're fat, man. When I say tortas, I mean fucking just, you know, that one guy. But just chicks that um, will choose a man over their children. Okay, so Heather Baron is going through her motions. Best believe, I haven't heard anything about her getting smashed on or ran up on. You know, they try to keep these women as comfortable and as segregated as they, as they can. But there's only so many women facilities in the state of California. So they have to go hit that linea. See, it's different from the men's population where you have GP and then, of course, SNY. Now you have integrated yards where they could segregate people like they did Danny Masterson, sending them to San Luis Obispo, CMC East. Or even a PHU protective housing unit. There's PC yards and SNY yards that they could send certain individuals to to lighten that load. So that way they don't get taxed or smashed on um, like they should be, right? Now, with women, there's very few facilities. So I'm not sure if they segregate them or how they do it. But I'm pretty sure, you know, they're going to have to see someone at some point in time. And that's just the way it goes and the way it is. They're going to rock their boat. Facts, right? They're going to rock steady like a whisper song out there. And these women will run up on them. Will beat on them. You know, for the case that they're in for. Nobody condones anyone who does anything to children. Whether it's man, woman, or child. No one gets down like that. So best believe in the women's facility, they're handling the business. Well, there's another chick. Similar situation. Her name is Ursula Juarez, right? And her, the cool part about this is her and her husband um, did this to a four-year-old child, right? They're accused, allegedly, of, of murdering their four-year-old child and drowning him and, and torturing him and doing all these weird and wild stuff, man. Excuse the language, but I'm just saying, you know, when I when I think about what these children went through, it's horrific. And um, I, I would hate to, you know, I hate to think about situations like that. It's pretty, it hurts the heart because, you know, you have to think about being in these kids' place. These are the people that are supposed to be the protectors and protect them and look out for them. And I couldn't even imagine something like this happening to my children and that there's despicable and vile and idiots and people that are out there that are willing to hurt anyone. You know, gangsters, anybody can get it. Men, women, and children. Oh, yeah, you're hardcore. You're really tough. You know, you'll go out there and you'll beat on children. Oh, yeah, you're a, you're a real one. Um, That shit makes my nose itch, man. I make some motherfucking want to just fucking do something bad to someone. So, these three women, what they have in common is they were manipulated by their men. Okay, it was already instilled in them. They already were bad mothers. You know, I don't give a fuck what anyone says. Any woman that puts a man before their kids or a man that puts a woman before his children, they're bad people all the way around. They ain't worth the shit that they stepped in, right? Because I'm going to explain something to you. Um, in Pearl Fernandez's case, 
She allowed her boyfriend to manipulate her. She got involved in the meth. She got involved in dope and drugs. And just like anyone else, a la SPM, I was high. I didn't know what I was doing. I was high. That's what these women do. They let these drugs and these men manipulate them. And they stop showing attention to their children. Let me explain something what happens to you. Let me explain how I had to beat some cat up right over the city. So I had a prima. And I'm not going to lie, my prima, she was out there. She was a hoe. She was for the streets. She was in the streets and for the streets. And we all knew it, but it was my prima. It was my blood. It was my family. So every time I went to her pad, she always had a different bottle right there, laid up, kicking back, eating all the Fruit Loops and shit, doing this thing. And uh, it was none of my business to get involved in her relationship. But when it came to her children, you know, I kind of just suggested that you need to stop bringing all these fucking men around your kids. And I say this to any woman. I implore it to them, right? Don't just fall in love with some dude you meet over the fucking live links, the love line, um, over the internet and automatically bringing them into your pad, right? Because you don't know what this guy's about. You haven't seen his resume, his paperwork, or his documentation. You don't know. There's a lot of these dudes that prey on these women, these single mothers, just to get in so they can fucking facilitate some type of action with the children. They're weird like that, right? So don't allow just any old man to see your kids, right? And don't allow your kids to see you with a whole bunch of different men, a whole bunch of different uncles, steals, right? That ain't cool. Um, you're going to fucking confuse your child. See, children need structure. They need a program. They need to go to school. They need a doctor. They need to do whatever they do. They need to understand that their parents are there to be their protectors and to facilitate that motherfucking structure. When you allow fucking just all these random dudes in your house, people out at one, two, three in the morning because you're all doped out, your kids' diapers all soiled, they're running around, you know, there's nothing to eat in the house, that's on you. A lot of these women are manipulated by these men. And let me explain what happened with my prima. So, she's chilling with this fucking dude, whatever, man, big fat fucker, right? I noticed them fat fuckers, they ain't got no, and a lot, and she was a heavy set chick too. A lot of these women that are heavy set, these guys, they have, um, you know, what's called, um, what's that shit? It's right off the tip of my tongue and the top of my head, man. Uh, they have low self-esteem, right? They feel some type of way about themselves. That's why they'll catfish the shit out of you using fat filters, like bold glamour, because a lot of these chicks, man, you know what I'm saying? The, all they have, that, the only thing that looks good on them is their eyelashes that they bought at fucking, uh, you know, Long's Drugs. So that's about it. Um, but anyway, she was one of them chicks. Long eyelashes, fat chick, and she was my prima, so I had love for her. Um, but this is what separated our, our friendship and our, our bloodship, right? I was, I'm done with you. You're cut off. You cut off like my leg. Orale miclo, right? And we should put a hit on that puto. Nah, it's going to take time, right? Exactly. With her, there is no time. Her time is over because she chose a man over her children. So anyways, this fat fucker's there chilling with this other fat, with this fat chick. And um, I go over there one day, man, I take the kids some candy, whatever. You know, I'm trying to be cool, man, in and out, my little primos and primas. And I see the kids all dirty and crying and just, it looked like a trap house. It looked like a fucking house that needed, the roaches were even sweeping. That's how bad that fucker was, right? And I was like, damn, what happened? Just a couple months ago, you was with that skinny white dude and everything was good, brother, right? What happened? The white boy had it going on. There was a gang of coffee in here and it was cool. And now you're with this fucking fat brother and it's just bad, right? Um, and what happened was the guy was jealous of her children. So she started to stray away from her motherly duty. She started to, you know, back on up from her kids. Um, and because this guy was jealous, he was jealous because she was showing her kids more attention than he was getting. Ah, oh, pobrecito, that fat fucker wasn't getting all the kisses and huggies he wanted, right? Well, guess what? I had to give him something he didn't want. So when I walked in that motherfucker, right, and I seen the way he was acting with their kids, I was like, hey, bro, what's up? Because those are my cousins. And he was like, nah, bro, you know what I'm saying? It's, she babies him too much. She spoils him too much. Okay, all right, right? Well, let me play spoiler to your chin piece. Boom, I got off. She's screaming, jumping on my back. Leave him alone. I love him, right? She just met him two weeks ago over a fucking uh, a, a cold plate of biscuits and gravy that wasn't fucking jailhouse. Didn't taste good, right? Um, Some of that Denny shit. So I just got off. Um, He was screaming, falling, you know what I'm saying? All methed out, doped out, fat and fucking fraudulent. And he left. And she was mad at me forever for that one. She ends up with another dude, same type of bullshit, man. This time I can't do nothing for you. Eventually the CPS came and took her kids from her because her own sister felt a certain type of way. I didn't have to do nothing. I just beat one dude up, man, and kept it pushing. But we forever lost our friendship and forever lost that spark that was there as primo and prima because I understood that she was the type of fat fucker that will put a man before her own children. And I can't, I can't uh, uh, respect that on no level. That's the type of chick Pearl Fernandez was. 
She put her boyfriend before Gabriel, man. And she even started to indulge and become involved in these torturous tactics that he was doing to this kid with BB guns and all kinds of crazy stuff. Man, I hate to think how much this kid loved his mother when deep down inside, she loved that man and that dope more than she loved him. Heather Baron is the same way, okay? This is the same type of fucking fat chick that, you know what I'm saying, will filter the shit out of herself to make you think that she's somebody else. And these guys are manipulated and then they manipulate these women. And then, of course, they choose their men over their children. When it comes to uh, Ursula Juarez, it's a kind of a different situation and a different story. Her and her husband, the baby's dad, actually chose to do this bullshit together. I don't know if they were on drugs. I don't know um, if they tripped out, flipped out, or they just got tired of becoming parents. But here's a newsflash, people. I'm tired every day. You cannot be tired of being a parent. Okay, that's you. You spoke your subject game when you was doing all that. That was you, right? Now you're stuck like Chuck, man. You're supposed to love your children, nurture them, make them better than you are, right? And don't you feel that? There's a fucking, it's like an imaginary string that's attached. You just feel that with your children. You know, you want to protect them from everything. If a drop of rain falls on my daughter, I'm wiping that shit off quick, right? I'm feeling some type of way. People are not like that. So these women that get locked up in prison for these crimes, you have women that are really missing their kids, that really want to get out, that maybe made some bad choices in their life, and they see women like this who threw their children away, who did bad things, um, and they decide to jump on them. You know, my tia told me a story one time. She was in Chowchilla. This was back in the 80s when Chowchilla was rough. Okay, Chowchilla had a name for itself. And she had a homegirl named Jackpot. She was a big old crip from South Central LA. Big black chick, man. And one thing about my tia, my tia was a gangster. My tia loops, right? She was with the shits, with all the shenanigans. Um, and she was in there pretty much shot calling for her little ranfla of, of chick she was with. You know, my tia was bringing in all the dope, doing all that. And she was a gangster in every form or fashion, man. Like I said, I got a lot of my game from her as well as my tia Joe, man. I'll forever be indebted to him. Um, not because they taught me the bad, but they showed me how what the difference between the bad and the good, right? Um, <clears throat> they just laced me up. So anyway, she tells me one day that black chick was messing with this little white girl, man. And that's what happens in these women's prisons. They're always... Women are very emotional. They're emotional creatures. So not necessarily do they want to eat that and then the cat, right? They'll do that too, but more so they just want them hugs and that closeness with somebody, that bond. You know, that's how women are. Whereas men, get the fuck away from me, homie. You know what I'm saying? You used to be my homie, now I act like you don't know me. And that's it. But with women, they're different types of creatures. They're very, they're feminine, right? And there's a lot of dudes that are very feminine too, but that's their problem. So anyways, this chick, um, she's messing with this little white girl. Well, she comes to find out this white girl was in there for killing her babies, right? Um, and that chick jackpot killed her. Okay, I ended up catching a life case over that. End up catching all kinds of time. You know, they were they were in a cell together. She took her in there. You know what I'm saying? Got her all high. Got her all faded off the pruno, man. And and strangled her, right? She killed her. Um, it happens. Even in, even in women facilities. You know, um, let me just tell you about a guy, man. There was a guy, because nobody likes a child killer, right? Um, I was in the hole. And I've told this story in the past, but trip out. We're in the hole, man. And he gets to the hole and he's on the bottom. I'm on the top tier. He's on the bottom. I could see right into his cell. I mean, perfect. Into the window and everything. He was catty corner to where I was at so I could look right into his cell. Now, one thing is you don't step. When you're walking past a man's cell, you don't look in his cell. That's his privacy. That's his domain, his canton, his chante, his pad. Homes. That's disrespect to look in someone else's pad if you're not welcomed, right? Um, but fuck this dude. He was in there for killing a four-year-old kid, a three-year-old kid. Excuse me, right? Which was his girlfriend's son. You know, he shipped the baby a little too much. Um, and everybody knew this. So he constantly was getting the blues, getting told about his crime over and over again. He, You know, I know it's people consider it bullying. But when it comes to a crime like that, people are not going to let you rest. There is going to be no fucking rest for the weary. That just ain't what's going to happen. The cops didn't even care about what was going on with them. Eventually, a few people, I'm not going to say who, started to get in his mind frame and started to pump him up. And I watched this dude take off running from the fucking door of his cell into the concrete wall and ram his head about three times until he was gone. Facts. Seen it with my own two eyes. I couldn't believe that shit, right? Shit split like a motherfucking watermelon, right? Um, it happens. So anyways, in these women facilities, that's exactly how it's going to go down with these three despicable women, which I consider probably three of the worst mothers in the history of California. You know, uh, the system has nothing coming for them. Women are going to get on them. Pearl Fernandez has been going through the blues. Now her old man got caught up. You know, um, a lot of these women that get away with this shit, like um, baby Brianna, you know, that was, I think, in New Mexico that where that happened. And the mother got out, you know, um, how she was able, you know, every different state's different, how she was able to get out. I'm sure she went through some of her hardships. Um, 
But to me, once someone who does something like that, you know, there's never no get backs. Your kid is gone. You can never, um, with God now, I've changed my life. People do change, but you can never change the fact of what you've done. And like I said, a lot of these women, you know, I don't blame them per se. It's more so that they're manipulated by men. But any woman who allows herself to be manipulated by a man and, and to cast aside their children, man, yeah, it, they always had it in them. You know, and that's the thing with these women nowadays, man. You got the internet and even the men, right? You got this internet and everybody meets on social media. Everybody meets online. You know, there is no more going to church, going to fucking Wiener Schnitzel, going to Wendy's and knocking you a bad one, a thought out the box. There is no more of that. Nowadays, everyone get online and you don't know what you got coming. You're going to get that, 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 that. You look like Luther Vandross, bitch. Which is, I was scared that you was in that motherfucker looking like Megan Good. You look like Megan, uh-uh, no good, right? They're not what they say they are. And of course, these guys see women that are vulnerable, especially single mothers, and figure they can manipulate. And a lot of these fucking poop up punk dudes get jealous of children, man, because the woman's showing them attention and they start doing bad things. And these a lot of these women allow this to go on. It happens every day. It's happening right now. There's a woman fat laid up, man, her kid's up looking for cereal, but there ain't no milk, man. All because the fat dude fucking drank it last night. It's ugly. Anyways, so as far as the women correctional uh, facility goes, there's a lot of women in there for bad things, and there's a lot of women in there willing to deal with that shit. It's facts, man. My Thea told me, she said, you know what, I'm going I'm to tell you straight up, mijo, um, any chick that went in with a bad charge like that with kids, yeah, they was getting smashed on and rolled up constantly. I was like, damn, right? She goes, they weren't really putting too much metal in them and doing all that. You know, women ain't like that, but uh, you know what I'm saying? They was breaking out the claws on their ass. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Again, look into these cases, man. The Gabriel Fernandez case, uh, the Noah Cuatro case. That's the one with Ursula uh, Juarez. And, of course, uh, the fucking, uh, what's the, the fat fucking mugre chick? Uh, Heather Baron, her and her old man and, the, and their son that they killed, man. It's just unfortunate. These kids, rest in peace. And I will keep this flame lit, man. I will keep these kids' memories going because I have to because their parents didn't. In fact, their parents were the fucking, the victimizers. With that being said, I hope that you move smooth with a purpose. Get everything that you want coming. And remember, at the end of the day, it's all about the strive, the struggle, the struggle, the strive. I'm going to continue to do what I does, man, and bring you the best possible enter, uh, entertainment and content I can. Not to shed a light and glorify prison, but to tell you just exactly what the fuck time it is. You know what it is. Thumbs up or thumbs down. Heavy's going to be the head that wears the crown. I'm going to continue to strive, struggle, and struggle, and strive for what I truly believe in, and that's the betterment of all people. Take care of your kids. Period.